Hello everybody. So, I'm back and it appears that the purge uh, that we're experiencing is growing. Um, as a composer, I'm particularly adept at pattern recognition. Uh, I also correctly predicted that our society globally would go into a type of pattern madness, um, apophenia uh, on designer drugs. Uh, a apophenetic uh, petri dish in which any given shadow must be a ghost. And in the desert, you can quench your thirst and also drown in a mirage. I have observed personally, first with dread and then with amusement, the various false malevolent accusations against me. Thomas, the magician, the chaos agent, the murderer, the rapist, the psychological mastermind behind QAnon. And the belligerents behind these rumors have agendas. And as we witnessed recently, and as I told you would occur, their narratives are inconsistent and they don't stand up to scrutiny. So I've stopped responding to such infantile behavior. I am aware that anytime uh, people have talent, and I do, uh, they get attacked. Um, take, for instance, in Mozart's time, his competitors would spread rumors, calling his music inferior. Uh, even in modern times, the great Glenn Gould, uh, brilliant pianist, a bit pedantic at times, well, Glenn Gould stated that Mozart went from being a great composer to a bad composer, a hack. <laughs> and you have to understand that Glenn Gould uh, specialized in piano and uh, was not a composer. Mozart was, and he composed for everything. If you listen to the clarinet concerto, he wrote several of them. Um, but uh, the later one, it's magnificent. You listen to the... Sinfonia Concertante uh, and the interplay between viola and viola, it's breathtaking. I've personally heard Mozart's Requiem, his final work in the Stephansdom Cathedral, where Mozart went to Sunday Mass weekly for the final decade of his life, 1781 to 1791. And people ask me, who do you think is the greatest composer of them all? And my answer is pretty uh, simple. Uh, it's an incredibly stupid question to ask. Um, it, it doesn't make sense. Music is like holy water hidden in a deep well. It's not a competitive sport. So, I wrote 10 symphonies when I was 18, and they remain unreleased. Upon my death, they'll be drip-fed. And since there seems to be so much uh, media and alphabet scripted anti-Russian sediment out there, I released a uh, very short, uh, brief overture to the Symphonia Ruski uh, days ago on Sophia Music. You're welcome to listen to it. Um, you have to understand, uh, the Russians are not our enemies. <laughs> They're a white Christian nation. I grew up reading uh, Dostoevsky and uh, Tolstoy and listening to Stravinsky and Shostakovich and Tchaikovsky. Um, I have friends who are Russian and they're wonderful. Uh, yes, they can be sardonic, um, but they can also uh, be very worldly, very knowledgeable. They're bibliophiles. They read like crazy. Uh, and. You know, one of them said to me once, um, Tomas, Balas de Luzno, Nibiot Gluzno, which the translation is that if we all take hold of this problem together, it won't feel heavy. A very, very wise man. Um, he's no longer with us, but uh, he was one of my wise Russian friends. So, uh, I'm going to start to release music slowly but surely um, on Sophia Music. And uh, I'm going to put out some other things, uh, other compositions, uh, on the deep web. And uh, they're going to take years to find. 
it's going to be a little uh, little Easter egg hunt. Hope everybody enjoys.